Are you someone who wants to protect their skin from premature aging caused by sun exposure? Well, you're in the right place. Today, I'm going to talk about everything you need to know about sunscreen and sun protection in this short video. Now, before we dive into the details, let me tell you what you're going to get out of this video. We're going to talk about ultraviolet radiation or UV radiation and what that is, why it's harmful to the skin. Then we're going to talk about sunscreen specifically, the SPF and what that stands for how much sunscreen you should be applying on a daily basis and when you're spending more time outside, how often you should be reapplying, the difference between different types of sunscreen like mineral sunscreen and chemical sunscreen, as well as water resistant sunscreen and how to choose the right sunscreen for your skin type. So without further ado, let's jump right in. So first up, let's talk about UV or ultraviolet radiation. This is a specific type of radiation that is emitted by the sun and reaches the skin surface. Now it's harmful to our skin. And the reason is UVB is a specific wavelength of light that tends to hit the skin surface. And it can actually cause genetic changes or DNA mutations in our skin cells. And this predisposes us to skin cancers over time. Now UVA is the other spectrum of UV radiation that reaches the sun's surface. And this one specifically goes deeper into the skin and damages our collagen, which is the stuff in our dermis or deeper in the skin that keeps us looking nice and youthful and plump. And so generally UV B is bad, it causes things like sunburns and skin cancer, and UVA causes aging. Ultraviolet radiation in general terms is just not good for our skin, both from a cancer perspective and for aging perspective. Now let's talk about SPF. So SPF, when you look at your bottle of sunscreen, stands for sun protective factor. Now this is a special calculation or formula that they use when they're developing sunscreens. What you need to know in general terms is that if you were to go outside on a bright sunny day and normally let's say you burn in 20 minutes, an SPF of 15 would allow you to stay outside for 15 times longer before you burn. And that's assuming that you've applied enough sunscreen and you're following other sun protective habits. When they look at these calculations in the lab, if you put on enough sunscreen based on the SPF, an SPF of 30 would protect you from 96.7% of harmful UV rays. Now let's compare that to an SPF of 50, which protects you against about 98% of UV rays. So you can see once you go over an SPF of 30, it's kind of diminishing returns. You're looking at like a 4% difference between an SPF of 30 versus 100. And that's why most people recommend at least an SPF of 30 is good enough to protect against most harmful UV rays. Now what I usually recommend is for day-to-day -day use, if you're just going outside, running errands, driving in the car, definitely use an SPF of 30. That should be enough to adequately protect you. If you're going to be outside for longer and you're going hiking or you're gardening and you're going to be like in a lot of direct sun, then I would definitely recommend going for an SPF of at least 50 or higher. Now let's talk about how much sunscreen you should be applying. When you're looking at sunscreen in the studies, they talk about applying at least two milligram per centimeter squared. It's like a body surface area type of description. Now, personally, I don't actually know how much that would be. And for a general person, I'm sure they wouldn't know either. So they've developed some easier little household rules to help you remember how much sunscreen to put on. Personally, I really like the teaspoon rule. So most people have a teaspoon. And so this is five milliliters. And so generally the rule is that you need one teaspoon for the head and neck area, one teaspoon for each arm, one teaspoon for the torso front and one teaspoon for the back, as well as two teaspoons for each leg. So when we're looking at how much sunscreen that really is, I'm gonna fill this up here. You wanna make sure you fill up the whole teaspoon. And now I find this is a little bit too much to apply all at once. So sometimes if I'm just doing this on my face, I'll divide it into two parts. I kind of take half of it, apply it to the face and neck, let it dry. And then I take the second half and apply it again. Another general rule is the two finger rule. So you take your sunscreen and you apply it onto two even strips on two different fingers. And that's how much you should use on the head and neck for everyday use. So now let's talk about choosing sunscreens. So there's two different types of sunscreens out there. There are chemical sunscreens and there are 
physical or inorganic sunscreens. Chemical sunscreens are those that contain things like oxybenzone, avobenzone, octocrylene, and meroxyl XL. They're very widely available and a lot of people like them. They work by absorbing the UV rays and then translating that energy into heat, which is then just released into uh, the surrounding skin or into the atmosphere. Now there's inorganic or the physical sunscreens and they work by forming a film along the surface of the skin and reflecting the light off the skin away from the body. Common inorganic sunscreen or physical sunscreen ingredients are things like zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. Now, how do you choose the right one for you? So the advantages of chemical sunscreens is they tend to apply a little bit more evenly and they often do not leave like a white cast that a lot of people don't like. They tend not to pill and it's easier to put makeup on top. But on the downside, some chemical sunscreen ingredients are actually banned in certain countries like Hawaii. For example, oxybenzone. The reason being is they think it might be contributing to coral reef bleaching as it leaches out into the water from people's bodies. The other disadvantage of chemical sunscreens is a lot of people don't like the idea of a chemical being applied to the body in large amounts. So if that is concerning to you, then I would suggest using a inorganic or physical sunscreen. Some people can actually also be allergic to certain components of chemical sunscreens and develop allergic reactions on the skin. So if you have sensitive skin or you're prone to developing allergies to sunscreen ingredients, then I would recommend a physical sunscreen. Now, what are the advantages of physical sunscreens? I find that they give you better overall protection against UV as well as some visible light. And we do know that visible light also contributes to things like pigmentation in the skin. So if you're prone to hyperpigmentation or brown marks on the skin, I would consider using a physical sunscreen. I also find that the physical sunscreens are a little bit gentler on the skin. So if you have things like eczema or a history of allergies to sunscreens, then I would recommend a physical sunscreen. One of the disadvantages of physical sunscreens though is that they can leave a bit of a white cast on the skin that not a lot of people really like. One way to get around that is that there's now a lot of options for sunscreens that have a tint to them, often by adding iron oxide pigment. And so that helps to decrease that white cast that a lot of people don't like. If you have acne prone skin, I find chemical sunscreens are often a little bit less occlusive on the skin. I would look for a sunscreen that is oil free or non-comedogenic. One common area that's challenging is the under eye or around the eye region. I tend to prefer more of a matte finish sunscreen for those areas that tends to dry on the skin and not move around, as opposed to a more oily or liquid type sunscreen that can move around a little bit more on the skin and enter the eye. You can also look for specifically eye creams that have sunscreens built in, and those ones are specifically designed to be less irritating to the eye area. Another common question is which sunscreen to use in pregnancy. For patients who are pregnant, I recommend using a physical sunscreen or inorganic sunscreen. Those are much safer than using the chemical sunscreens just because of the potential risk of absorption into the body with the chemical sunscreens and unknown harm to the fetus. So now let's talk about how often you should be applying sunscreen. So for day-to-day -day use, I recommend applying at least once a day first thing in the morning as part of your usual skincare routine. Then at least you know you have some coverage. Generally, if you're gonna be outside doing any type of activity, you could be sweating or exercising, you should definitely be reapplying every two hours. Now in terms of what about water sports or if you're sweating profusely. So there's actually water and sweat resistant sunscreens and generally they also have a number on them, like 20, 40 or 80. And so generally that means that if you were to apply that sunscreen, you could go in the water for 20 minutes if it's a rating of 20, or two 20 minute intervals broken apart if it's a rating of 40. And so if you're going into the water multiple times for a longer duration and you're using a sunscreen with a rating of 40, you should be applying generally every hour. Now a lot of people have questions about what order you should apply your skincare in the morning. So generally, if you're using multiple skin ingredients, I recommend first applying your vitamin C serum. That will help to protect against oxidative damage from the sun. You can then put on a moisturizer if you have more dry skin. And then I would put your sunscreen on last, followed by your makeup. 
Generally, you want to wait a few minutes in between applying different ingredients to give it time to soak in and dry before you put the next layer on. I recommend making sure you apply your sunscreen alone and not mixing it with another ingredient before applying because there could be interactions with your different creams. It's better just to put one on, let it dry, and then put your sunscreen on top. So guys, there you have it. That's a bit of a crash course on how to protect your skin from the sun. We talked about a lot of different things, and so I hope you found this video useful. Just to recap, we talked about UV and what that means, SPF and what that stands for, how often you should be applying sunscreen, how much sunscreen you should be applying, as well as the difference between chemical and physical sunscreens and which to use for your specific skin type. We also talked a little bit about water resistant and sweat resistant sunscreens. If you found this video useful, feel free to give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button for more videos about skincare tips and tricks. And as always, stay sun safe and enjoy your time in the sun. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.